such attacks to five in the past week, seven since the start of the year. So when we think of five in a week. <laughs> Hey guys, your boy Sex the Sec Pack, and we're back with another video today. Now, this is crazy. Well, finally, man, back time, and we're in Sweden today for the first time on the channel. So, anyone from Sweden watching, make sure you go smash that red subscribe button, man. That's a, that's an automatic, bro. Do you got Alexander Isaac, my brother, irritating? Come on now, listen, man. This is crazy. This is something I've actually heard about prior to this reaction, but obviously. It's a good thing now that I think it's Kid Nerd, if I'm not mistaken, on a video on this. But today, man, we've got the deadly beef inside a small Swedish town, Shorters versus DP. This sounds like a fucking dissertation title for English language, bro. This sounds like a novel, bro. What kind of title is this, bro? The deadly beef inside a small Swedish town, bro. If I read that sentence here, outside of this context of Jewel, bro, I'll think that there was some... Next, micro bacteria in the beef, bro, over there. The cows were just infected and the Swedish town got smoked, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? But in reality, we've got some mad, crazy jewel beef right now. We're going to check this one out. Been a while since we had a little documentary, mini documentary on the channel. But I really do enjoy these reactions. They're a little bit longer, but do you know what I'm saying? It's one of them ones. You just get the beer cough, head straight into it. So before we do, go get your drinks, go get your beverages, cappuccino, frappuccino, lappuccino, soon be subscriber chino. But yeah, go get your drinks and that, man. Don't, don't lack, man. This is a good video coming up. Make sure you like, comment, share, smash that red subscribe button. Follow all my socials. Run up the Instagram to 2K followers as well. Hit me up on there too. And make sure you drop any video suggestions you want me to check out down below in the comment section. Without further ado, man, we're not going to waste too much time. The deadly beef inside a small Swedish town. Let's go. Two men in their 20s have been shot dead in Stockholm in an oh, apparent whoa. gangland kill. This started aggressive, bro. This started like Modern Warfare 2 when it's like, you know, he does all that mad sounds at the beginning and you're up the campaign. And it's like, uh, it puts uh, CIA and them things there. And you're like, wow, Agent Price, da, 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 all them things there. Or was it Task Force, Task Force 141? Big, if you know about that. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. You're invited to the birthday party. Two men in their 20s have been shot dead in Stockholm in an apparent gangland killing. Swedish police say they were sitting in a car. I'm not trying to pause too much, but Stockholm's not a small town. Isn't that the capital? If I'm not mistaken, for Sweden. Come on now, man. This geography thing is just. I need to make it more difficult for myself. Are in a suburb northwest of the capital where uh. gangs have been fighting turf wars. It brings the number of dead in such attacks to five in the past week, seven since the start of the year. So when we think of five in a week, no, that's a bloodthirsty bro. That's a bloodthirsty bro. That town have officially has a bloodthirsty middle bro. That's insane. In a week, nah. Between two, nah. Gang warfare. We maybe think of America, England, or maybe some third world country, but not Sweden. In this video, we will be going through a deadly war in the capital city of Sweden called Stockholm, which, despite Sweden being a country of only 10 million, made Sweden have the highest gun deaths in the whole of Europe in 2018. Let's get into it. Nurse, okay, so like I said before, we are going inside the capital city of Sweden called Stockholm. More specifically, a small town inside Stockholm called Rinkeby, home of two of the most ruthless gangs in the country. Now, Sweden for quite a few decades now has had quite an open and relaxed policy towards asylum-seeking refugees. The country was quite notorious for letting residents of war-torn countries like Syria and Somalia claim asylum inside their country. And when refugees would come in, there were a few towns normally they will be sent to, one of these towns being Rinkeby. In fact, Sweden actually has the highest asylum immigration per capita in the whole of Europe. But despite Swedish open door policies, a lot of the Swedish people- Not gonna lie, you know, when you think about it that way, that's kind of crazy. Sweden of all countries, they're not even like big like that, like in terms of like, I don't know, maybe I'm being dumb like land mass wise, but if it's only 10 million people and they're taking in the most per capita, bro. And they're not even like rich like that per capita, I'm pretty sure. They might be, but I'm not too sure. That's a that's a big burden, you know. Big up the Swedes in that, but not gonna lie, man. Don't on, on a no no brazy thing, uh, that assimilation is gonna be crazy in them towns. Imagine bro, that town, yeah, let's be real. It's just full of the Caucasians. I'm talking mula yogurt without the chocolate banana flakes in the little pouch. You know about that, that's a buff one. But anyway, I'm talking strictly vanilla 
Muller yogurt, yeah? And then you go out of nowhere and you get yourself caramel, you spritz it in there from, from, from Arabia. And then you get uh, some chocolate from Somalia, drizzle it in there. Bruv, the thing goes left, bro. Don't even know what flavour it is anymore, bro. No one knows what's actually in the pot anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? So I can imagine, bro, these, bro, it can get hot there, you know? But then again, do you know what I'm saying? It's not to say that the people are bad in that, but it could just be one of the ones where uh, if the Swedish people are able to assimilate, you know what I mean? Them two can integrate well. Some places are harder for the coaches to to come together. Do you know what I'm saying? That's why even the UK brothers and them man all vote on Brexit and that. That was crazy that situation, bro. Years was just lagging on that. But we want to see what happened, man. I want to see where Kid Nurse going with this. He's doing his research and that. I respect it. A star student so far. Wasn't as accepting to the new arrivals. And far right protests didn't make integration the easiest. Now Rinkaby is home to a massive Somali population who were escaping violent conflicts in their home country. But a lot of Somali people who moved to Rinkaby were struggling. And high unemployment rates and hard living was a common theme with the Somali nice. immigrants who just moved in. So okay. the kids of these immigrants had to get it in another way. With the other way mainly being drug dealing and robberies. But on the 22nd of July 2015, a robbery gone wrong led to one of the worst bouts of violence Europe has ever seen. Four Somali boys from Rinkaby planned and executed a robbery on a currency exchange in a city called Tabby. They ran off with around $200,000 and the robbery was talk of the town, but not everybody was happy about this. The robbers who executed this left out a couple younger members from the robbery, despite the younger members being part of the planning for it. The reason why the younger members were missed out was due to a previous robbery where one of them let off an unnecessary shot, so they were seen as a liability. The same day, the youngest started demanding money from the robbery, but they were getting shut down. The person who was thought to be behind the robbery was a 19 year old called Izzy. I was after Raw, man's face and Govy got dropped in the video. I'm assuming you got bagged because. That is crazy posting that on YouTube, bro. After the robbery, he was shot dead, starting oh, the feud. Oh, damn! Rest in peace, bro. I, you know what? Fair. That It went left there. I didn't see that one, but that's a conclusion to the story, I guess. Bro got shot dead like that. He planned it and he got quiffed. That's fucked. Was a 19 year old called Izzy. Hours after the robbery, he was shot dead, starting the feud. The next day, the whole town is shaken by the brutal murder, and Izzy's friends were not happy. So, Izzy's friends arranged to meet with some of the younger members who was meant to be involved in the robbery at a petrol station, with the younger members thinking that they might be getting their cut from the robbery when they arrived. Instead, when they pulled up, 16 shots were let off onto the younger members, killing one 16 year old and injuring the other, creating a big divide in the town. Between the fam, this is crazy. This reminds me of like the oh, what set was it, man? I forgot now, man. But even still, it kind of reminds me as well of the like the YG sort of beef in, in New York and like apparently these sets at some point they're old, it's all kind of linked up, and then accidents happened and situations went wrong, and then do you know I mean beefs happened and then sets split. But that's so they're from the same gang. They were from the same gang. You know what it is? That's crazy though. The youngest put the work in, they planned it. The oldest executed. They risked the jail time, really and truly, yeah? And then they got the bread. The youngest saying, nah, but you violate ting. But then the oldest saying, nah, but we let you before. And then you, you bust off shots and that's getting us hella heat, bro. I get that. That's a tough situation. No one's really wrong in that. I can't lie. In terms of thinking they, what, they, what they want out of it, no one's really wrong in that. But at the same time, I think the oldest should have swung them a little something, man. A little change, man. And a lot of lives would have been lost, I think. That would have been the easiest solution, I'll be real. For what we know, but we're gonna hear the whole story. Never jump to conclusions, do you know what I mean? 16 shots were let off onto the younger members, killing one 16 year old and injuring the other, creating a big divide in the town between the younger and older Somali group of friends, with only two to three years separating them. With the older group who supported Izzy later calling themselves Shotters, and the younger group calling themselves DP or Death Patrol. Now, Rinkaby is a small town, real small, with less than 20,000 people living there, and a lot of the Somali community already knew it was a less than 20,000 people you know you can fit three of that town in the emirates crazy about to happen with some of the kids even relocating quite fast after these two days of carnage but for a while it wasn't looking like a big issue inside the town with only little spouts of arguments and fistfights but no one was getting killed at this point in somali culture there's something called blood money where the families of the deceased get together with the families of the murderers and discuss the pay a price for the murder the two families of the murder Man. got together but couldn't agree on the blood money ritual but they did plan to have both is that true I didn't even know that, you know. That's kind of mad, because I'll be real, fam. Like, 
we don't really have that in Eritrea, to be fair. So obviously, East African thing might just be strictly Somali type culture, but you know what it is? I get, I understand it though, because in in that side of the world, bro, it's and it's not different where I'm from as well, bro. Like, it's not as simple as you just kill someone and then like, yeah, whatever the murder, you go to jail and that's it, bro. Like, people's livelihoods, their families will starve, bro, because a lot of time, bro. The, 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 the males especially, man, like, they're, they're doing work, they're there to look after the family when they're older, the parents when they're older, do you know what I mean? So it's like, you're just not only, like, took a life, bro, you really, do you know what I'm saying? You put a family, or a whole family in jeopardy, so you got to pay a price for something, I understand that. The murder to be buried next to each other, huh? to show whoa, some whoa, unity, whoa, whoa. bro. But they did plan to have both of the murder to be buried next to each other, wow. to show some unity between the two. But this piece was cut short on the 2nd of December 2016. A member of the Shotters gang called Indiana was visited by his brother who was living abroad in university. Indiana and his brother were spending some time together before his brother had to go back to uni, so visited the local calf to get some food. Out of nowhere, two masked gunmen from the Death Patrol ran into the calf and started letting enough shots. The two brothers tried to escape but got trapped inside the washing room and both were shot to death. Despite the brother not even having any affiliations, just being on a quick break from uni, this caused outrage. Bro, rest in peace to both of them but man that's sad. That's sad man. When you think about it as well bro, these, these brothers came from war bro, do you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, this thing's bugging. But these men came from war yeah and it's like, I can't even, bro, that's mad. Like, your family done the most to get you there, bro. And he's doing the right thing as well, man. Man was going union, that, trying to sort his life out. Do you know what I mean? Build his ability and that, and he lost his life, bro. And forced everyone from the small town of Rinkaby to pick one side, shotters or death patrol, and the beef starts to intensify. December 31st, the man is shot in his car that is linked to the death patrol gang. He's shot four times in his legs, but left with non life threatening injuries. Next day, another man from the death patrol side is shot. This time he dies, lying on a residential street with a shot to the head. At this point, police are fed up, and so are the Swedish nationals. Man and the said, far right move. Man said, fed up. Nah, man, you can't see your fed up bro that's it wasn't like they was accepting it bro like it's just it was a bit mad Got to their head. At this point, police are fed up and so are the Swedish nationals. And the far right movement in the country starts to grow, with protests storming throughout the country, with Swedish nationals wanting immigration to stop inside their country. On the other side, the immigrant population of Rinkaby were also not happy. They believed they were being targeted by police and were starting to be unjustly dealt with. Early in 2017, an alleged violent drug related arrest near a metro station left the residents of Rinkaby to have enough, and large riots started storming throughout the city which led to looting arson and even fights towards oh, the police man. no i'm not gonna lie man that's not the way to go about it bro. Like, i don't get the, the writing thing i get I, I know it is on i know i get the meaning but just what i say i don't envy the police bro like them man there i'm not gonna lie bro they can be on fuckery sometimes bro but at the same time bro they're the real ones that at the end of the day bro if satin goes left bro they're gonna have to deal with it in the, in the country but same time bro how do you deal with that like because I, I kind of get both sides a bit, like, obviously, the man them are moving mad, they're, they're dishing corn, like it's like, like they're, do you know what I'm saying, back home, growing it on the crops, bro, it, they're just slapping everyone with the corn in, in, in the town, and obviously the Swedes, we don't know, as far as Kid Nurse, like, video saying, like, what it was on before, because, well, you know, they could have been white gangs doing the most as well, but, then no one said nothing, but as soon as the Malis came, or the East Africans came, or whatever it was, yeah, they started moving mad about it, like, it could be that, or it could just be that the town really wasn't active, and as soon as the immigration came, it went mad, which I can understand at the same time. But how did the police deal with that, bro? Do you know what I'm saying? If you lot were the Met Police, I'm talking PC Anderson promoted, yeah? Now his name is PC Anders uh, Silver Swarovski. Then what are you going to do? I don't know, bro. Because you gotta do you got to do your thing to pattern these gangs. And obviously, the majority immigrants in these gangs from what kid nursing. But you can't just be out here harassing people for something they ain't done, bro. But then how are you going to know who done what, bro? It's crazy, bro. I would never want to be a fed, bro, because that situation, it takes a lot of careful behaviour, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? You cannot treat people wrong for something they ain't done. Do you know what I'm saying? But these man are moving mad, bro. It's, it's like LDs in the, they're in the whip playing LD live corn, bro. They want to give it to everyone. 
50 people were injured and two arrested. This came days after the former President Trump let off a speech towards a migrant crisis in Sweden, saying immigration is a big factor towards the violence which has taken over the country. And the country was starting to get split in half, with integration between Swedish nationals and migrants as bad as ever, with areas like Rinkeby even being called no-go zones from nationals and the press, and Islamophobia and racism on the way up. But this didn't slow down the beef in the area, and it was the 8th of January when the death patrol gang struck again, this time in a pizza shop when Hamza Abdi, a member of the Shotters gang, was shot twice in the head. The shooting was Bro, caught- these men are just doing headshots only. Are you deep? This is, bro, these are assassinations, bro. I, that's really what it is. It's fucking assassinations. These aren't like shootings like we know shoot. At least how I know shooting. In ends, bro, you don't see many men ever getting headshots, bro. Like, like as if it's planned, bro. Like once a year, maybe in the whole of capital, bro. Twice a year, like in terms of the gang beast. But this is, bro, side by side, they're catching man lacking. But it's such a small town. Where can you hide, bro? I get that as well. Where are you going to hide? It makes sense. Like this little square here, bro. At least a couple M's have happened here, bro. That's crazy. On surveillance, and the police was desperate to find the killer. But it was seeming like this would be another unsolved case for the Swedish police. Until two young boys were caught doing a robbery two months after the killing. One of these boys being a 16 year old called Shaki. After they were caught by the police, they raided Shaki's house, where they found the same gun and clothes which were used in the murder of Hamza Abdi the month previous. They also matched Shaki's body type to the body type of the shooters. Man, now, Swedish sentences and prisons are very light compared to the rest of the world. Sweden has quite a different type of prison system to most countries and they focus more on changing and helping the prisoners instead of punishing them. Like the prison rooms look like uni accommodations and it actually works with Sweden having the lowest re-offending rate in the whole of Europe. So wow. even despite Shaki committing a murder, he was only sentenced to three years in the youth care unit. Okay, okay, that's crazy behaviour. That's crazy behaviour. Run me the blood money now bro. Run me the blood money now bro. I'm not taking no three years, bro. Nah, bro. If that was me, bro, my brethren, my family, bro. Nah, bro. Three years. Nah, man. Nah, man. Put, bro, buck man on the wing, bro. I will do it, bro. Like, that's crazy. Three years. Nah, man. I get the rehabilitation for the mental configuration, but nah, man. Three years is brazy. Now, I'm not really sure how this really works because it would only make sense that having such light sentences would make people not really care about committing crimes. That's what but I'm on saying. the other hand, I guess if you focus more on helping and educating the criminals who more time probably had a harsh background, they will have new skills and a new outlet to come out on. But with Shaki, this wasn't the case. He wanted to get out. So Shaki was on day release when he went out to a shopping mall accompanied by two guards. But also in the shopping mall was two of Shaki's friends waiting for him. Once they spotted Shaki, the two boys started threatening the guards and then escaped with Shaki and they were on the run for months a nationwide manhunt was out to find them and many members from the death patrol gang nah, were raided this is what I'm saying man this is what I'm saying this is this year is why them brothers will never the, niggas really can really fix their life up here can't get the opportunities to do leave and that stuff bro because my man M someone and you really three years bro light work bro that's light work if you're on the M charge that's light work, bruv. I'm not saying free is in, in general is light work, but in that prison, my man's saying it's uniocom, basically. You're learning skills. You're basically at university, bro. Really, bro. You're going for three years, free of charge. You ain't got student loan debt. Your back's not heavy with the interest rates. You're just there, studying, learning, becoming a better person, and then you come out with jobs, job skills, you know what I'm saying? All that. And then you pattern your life up, bro. Do good for the family and that. Make your mum proud, make the family proud back in Somalia. But man just came out and just dipped, bro. For months. Come on, man was out to find them That's and crazy. many members from the death patrol gang got raided but there was no luck until a basement outside Stockholm was raided and two members of the death patrol and Shaki was all found and arrested with Man. Shaki being sent back to service centers now if you know your geography you'll know that Sweden borders another country called Denmark but unlike Sweden Denmark hasn't really seen much gang violence in fact Denmark is rated the third most peaceful country in the world but Please. on June the 25th 2019 Denmark was subject to something that no 
one expected. So three members of the Shotters gang arranged to meet a Norwegian musician to network and make some tracks together. So they took a seven hour drive from Stockholm to the capital city of Denmark called Copenhagen to meet up with a musician. But what they didn't know was that the musician had actually led the three Shotters members into a trap. Waiting for them in Denmark was five members of the Death Patrol gang. Okay, so this is basically GTA Heist bro. These men are going international now. They're doing the maddest. Bro, this is fucking up. This is a movie, man. This is a damn movie, man. Nah, man. Wait, bro, I can't even record these, man, bro. Do you know what I'm saying, bro? Nah, bro. Nah, man. Hold this, bro. This is crazy. They got seven hour train drive, I mean, to, to Denmark, bro. Could you imagine, bro? Imagine ZT and Homerton beefing in fucking Holland, bro. What kind of madness is this? Nah, man. This has to be fake. This has to be fake. This is the realest beef I've ever heard. Man, they were doing borders. Wow. He flew in there the night previous. When they arrived, the Death Patrol gang started firing into their car. The driver managed to get out and run behind the parking garage with a shot to his leg. But his 21-year-old brother-in-law and another member wasn't as lucky, both dying from the shooting. One of the shotter's members even tried to get out the car and crawl out. But a member of the Death Patrol gang got out of his car, reloaded his AK-47 and let off another 14 shots point blank range. The killers then took a picture of the two lifeless bodies and posted it all over social media. No. Five men were charged and sentenced for the murder where they are serving life in a Norwegian prison. One that makes sense. In the Norwegian prison, they're doing life now. So what happens to three years and why is it life now? I need to learn this system because it could be like actually smart, bro. I doubt Sweden are not dumb, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Very advanced country, but I need to understand how one brother got three years and then the rest of them brothers got life. I know it's more than one murder, but like, bro, a life's a life, bro. I don't, I don't get it. Man being 23 year old Muhammad Ali, recently it was decided that the killers would be deported back to Sweden to finish off their sentence. But mm. news broke oh, out. I'm even dumb because the originals in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweden was the three years, Norway was life. Alright, makes sense that Mohammed is begging the court not to send him back to Sweden, saying that in a Swedish prison his life will be in danger. He even said he would rather be sent back to Somalia, which is where his parents are originally from, just showing how dangerous this war is. Now while all this violence and back-to-back -back killings were happening, a rapper from the Shotters gang started to emerge, a kid called Yasin Dodon, and he really blew up with one of his hit singles called Chicago. At the same- If you want me to react to that, let me know man, let me know for sure, I'm I wanna check that out. At the time there was another Swedish rapper running up on the scene. A kid called Aina from the other side of Stockholm. He was blowing up on the Swedish charts, getting the most streams on Spotify in Sweden in 2019. But around the same time, Aina was still knees deep in the streets, being affiliated with a gang called the Varby Network. Now Yasin and Aina actually used to be cool, until Aina got into an argument with an affiliate of Yasin's gang, another big rapper in the city called Havel. After the argument, Yasin, Havel and Aina would make slight disses towards each other, until Havel invited Aina to an apartment to squash the beef. When Aina pulled up to the apartment, Havel and others kidnapped him, tying him up and holding him hostage in an apartment. During the kidnap, Havel stole his watch, his chains and held him for a £100,000 ransom. The gang even forced Aina to wear female underwear and took numerous pictures of him in embarrassing positions. Havel and his gang threatened that if Aina didn't pay the ransom money that they would release the pictures. But Aina refused to pay so the pictures were posted all over social media. At the same time, Sweet Swedish police were starting to crack down heavy on Stockholm gangs and once the pictures got released they wanted to make examples out of Yasin and Havel. Same time Swedish police were working with other countries on a crackdown of an encrypted network called EncroChat which was a oh, network yeah. where normally criminals would discuss illegal activities on an untraceable server until the server was hacked by international authorities in 2020. During this hack Swedish authorities managed to track messages sent by Yasin on the plot to kidnap the rival rapper Aina. Yasin and originally plotted to lure Aina to a recording studio where they would have captured him, but Havel beat him to it. Both Yasin and Havel were both arrested for the kidnapping, with Yasin sentenced to 10 months and Havel... I'm not gonna lie, what's the relevance to the shotters and the DP? That's what I'm trying to understand, and maybe it might come in a minute, but I, I don't really know. Sentenced to two years, but the court wasn't happy and wanted longer sentences. Man said 10 months in two years, I just got that for kidnap. This is, young Dizzy doing seven, seven or eight. 
And they got 10 mums, that's brazy. But to do this, they needed Aina to testify against them at court. Several months later, Havel's little brother is shot and killed, and Aina was the number one suspect for this, Man. but they had no evidence against him. But regardless of this, the court was still persistent on getting Yasin and Havel's sentence increased, but Aina was still refusing to testify. So the police set up a false pickup from Aina's apartment, so you'd have no choice but to go to court. That same <laughs> night that decision was made, Aina was shot dead with one bullet to the head and two to the stomach. Whoa, whoa, nope. whoa, whoa, I'm missing something. He went from, they was gonna pick him up from the, 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 the yard to take him to court, and he's dead now. It was pick up from Aina's apartment, so you'd have no choice but to go to court. That same night that decision was made, Aina was shot dead with one bullet to the head and two to the stomach. No one knows the exact motive for the killing, but generally people think that it's because Aina was about to testify on the kidnapping. The shooters released videos on Snapchat just before the murder, with masks and the same Glock that was used for the murder. After the shooting, the killers released another video playing one of Aina's songs in the background, with the caption 1 nil. But Still, no one's been charged for the rapper's death. Yasin has since been released from prison for the kidnapping, but the feds still have him under investigation and could possibly re-arrest him for more serious charges to do with the kidnapping. He's also still a potential suspect for a murder on one of his own gang members that took place on New Year's Eve 2019. A 20-year-old shotter's member called Vincent was shot dead in the oh, back of a- Oh, cool, so he shot- yeah, I'm dumb, yeah, because he's a shotter's member. Cool, 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 I forgot that a car in the early hours on New Year's Eve. That's in the car was four other Shotters members, including Yasin. In the hours before, Snapchat footage shows Yasin and Vincent eating at a restaurant just moments before the murder. There was even footage of other members in the car giving Vincent a present. Police believe this was all recorded to try and cover up the Shotters members' motives for the killing. Straight after the murder, Yasin booked the first morning flight to London, but was arrested shortly after. Evidence okay, shows- the brain is not there right now, unless I'm missing something. Why you fly to London bro? London bro? They'll bag you and send you back bro. They won't give a damn bro. Do you know what I'm saying? They won't give a damn. That the shot was fired inside the car and once they detained Yasin oh, they would- Man said YNW Melly vibes. Also found gunpowder particles on his clothes. Police say a possible motive for the murder was that Vincent had been getting closer with another gang in the area. But for now, Yasin and other members have all been released due to lack of evidence. Anyway guys, I hope this gives everyone a bit of insight into what is going on in Sweden. I'll probably start doing more videos covering different countries. So drop in the comments what you want me to cover next. It's been your boy Kid Nerd and peace out. Bro, Yasin, this brother got nine lives bro. He cannot get caught lacking fam. He's serious. How he's busting case and getting on bail and no evidence and NFAs and that, I don't know. But this beef, bro, it's really opened my eyes, man. I'm not gonna lie, enjoy this video, man. This thing is crazy. So many headshots, bro. This is this must be the maddest beef I think I've ever seen, bro. Like, really, really, really. It's not even about the numbers, man. It's the, the killers, the, the rapid ability, bro. The rapid get-backs and the rapid savageness, bro. Like, man, them pulling out AKs, reloading to give 14 more shots to brothers that are on the floor crawling, bro. Like, that's an assassination, bro. I don't know, man. This is fucked, bro. Sweden's a nice country, man. I'm surprised to really hear this shit, bro. But it is what it is, isn't it? I can't lie, man. It's really opened my eyes to what's going on over there. But listen, man. Let me know your thought know, down below, man, of the beef, man. I want to see a discussion down below. I'm going to start replying to comments as well, man. Listen, man. I've been a bit... I've been moving lazy. I've been rude. But listen. Let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure you like, comment, share, smash that red subscribe button and hit that post notification bell as well if you want to see more videos like this. Make sure you go follow all my socials. And other than that, it's your boy Sex the Set Pack. And I'm out. Show. Sure.